The regular season finale with a lot riding on it for Oklahoma State as the Cowboys take on BYU. Here we are. If you win, a great chance to make the championship game. Two months ago, I don't know that anyone that follows Oklahoma State would have thought that was possible, but the, the groundwork was being put together even though people didn't see it, even during those tough times. I don't think there's any question that we, we've exceeded expectations from where people close to the program like yourself would have thought after the third or fourth week. But it's a good example of what a group of men can do if they just stick together and stay the course and not get distracted. This team is very special in that area. I've been uh, really lucky during my career to have good groups of young men most of the time. Sometimes we had some knuckleheads, but this group is uh, even a little different than, than any other team. Uh, we talked a little bit. It's almost like the 21 team because they weren't really talented. When I talk about multiple first-round picks, uh, but they played well together. And this group has just stayed the course, and we've made some adjustments on offense, obviously, that have showed up. And then defensively, we've tried to fix some things as we've moved along. And, um, and we've gotten a few breaks, um, but the team chemistry is what's contributed to this. And it's been a really, really fun group to coach. Yeah, you, you would think with a lot of new guys that the chemistry might be negatively mm -hmm. impacted. However, I think of it maybe this way. Maybe I'm wrong. Alan Bowman hadn't played in two years. He's got a point to prove. Same is true for Josiah Johnson. He wants to show he can play at the FBS level. He's got a point to prove. And you just roll down the line with these new guys that are, you know, Anthony Goodlow. Every, mm -hmm. All of those new guys, you know, Kirkland even, trying to show, hey, I can play at this level. Do, do you think that helped? That you had a bunch of guys who were really hungry coming in here who wanted to be here? I think that is, is right on. And the other thing... Uh, that I've noticed is the the portal guys, um, Elijah, Bowman, Justin Wright, Goodlow, Kirkland, um, there's others, Cooper, uh, Leon. Yeah. The thing that warms my heart, they think this is the greatest place ever. They'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. Now, most of those guys are – taking a step up and facility wise money wise food wise lifestyle is different than where they came from but that doesn't always mean that they're going to like it that much sure and i heard josiah the other day there was a quote he had with the media that we should be using in recruiting because it was really heartfelt from him about what oklahoma state means to him and he said i've only been here 10 months and they think this place is the best ever. And that's a very positive thing for our culture. Yes. And what you said is right. We don't have any idea or we didn't have any idea how you're going to take 30 new players and somehow integrate them in your team and have some chemistry. But I think that the new guys that came in wanted to be here so bad to prove a point. And then once they got here, I think that they've shared things with the other players on the team like, guys, this place is awesome. And I think it worked. Yeah. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt it worked. So thinking about the last three or four weeks, has maybe the biggest leap in improvement been in your ability to throw the ball deep? You did it very well mm -hmm. against Houston. Would you say that's been the biggest leap forward is your deep passing game? Well, two things. One, as we know, we've been able to establish a running game. Sure. Which balances us out. And then that allows us to get single coverage on the perimeter where we can throw the ball down the field. Early in the year when we struggled to run it, and then the second half of the season last year when we couldn't run it, we couldn't throw the ball down the field because the defense played back. Right. They had everybody playing pass, and we couldn't get the ball down the field, and we certainly couldn't establish a running game. Right. So this has allowed us to throw the ball down the field better than we have in – long time you know speaking of offense just if you don't mind just a little research I did so right now you have Ollie Gordon tied for the national lead in rushing Brennan Presley's 15 catches against Houston the third most by a player in a game this year in the country and Alan Bowman is the only quarterback at the FBS level that's attempted at least 300 passes and been sacked four times or less so think about that three 
big, right, big stars, stats. big yeah. stats, which to me says offensive continuity, complementary yeah. football, as you like to say, as those are three different areas, but all at a national level in one way, shape, or form. Well, if you remember back when we were struggling, one thing that I said that's, that's throwing us off track offensively is negative yardage plays. Yes. And those are your sacks. And so when we were struggling to run the ball and we were getting negative yardage plays, second and 15 was monumental. I mean, for us to be able to overcome, I and mean, just we couldn't do it. So those statistics are evidence of the improvement we've made. And, and you know, and that's a tribute to the team. And then obviously our offensive staff has done a really good job making those adjustments and staying with it. So the first few weeks, what would be Iowa State, Kansas State, Kansas, we kind of caught people off guard because there wasn't much video on us. Right, right. Well, each week it's gotten more difficult because now there's video evidence of what we're doing five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks. So it's been a little more difficult. Um, there's more game planning and scheme and ways to try to slow it down. Right. And the same thing's going to happen uh, in the upcoming game against BYU. They're going to put everybody in the box, and they don't want us to rush the football, and they're going to force us to throw a pass. Right. That's what I think they'll do. That's what the teams have done the last four or five weeks. Sure. So when that happens, how do you know the balance of we've got to make some tweaks, some enhancements mm -hmm. to address that, but we don't want to leave our box either? Right. So how do you balance that? Well, the toughest part is when that happens, you have to throw the ball. The percentages of being successful of running into a heavy box with an unblocked player there and just assuming he's not going to make the play in the long term is not going to – benefit our offense much at all mm -hmm. but you don't want to go away from the running game completely if you've got a guy in the backfield that's playing as good as ollie right so you have to try to rush the ball in ways that the extra guy is away from the run and let him fold back and make a play for four to six yards and then he might miss which they have some right the long run ollie got uh, down in houston we blocked everybody the extra guy came down he got caught in the a gap and ollie went in the c gap and and it worked. They, they still had an extra guy down there. So it's the balance of you got to attack on the outside, but you still can't just abandon the running game. Sure. Because it's been too beneficial for us up to this point in the season. BYU is the opponent. Just how dramatically different are they now, both sides of the ball, than they were a month ago? Yeah, it's interesting. They, uh, they changed in the last game against OU defensively a full 360. They, they went from an even front to an odd front. The back end was similar at times, but it was a different defense. And then offensively, they've changed quarterbacks. Um, the first guy they had playing has got hurt, and the other now they got this other guy in there playing that's um, – he's running a lot of triple option stuff. And they, they ran quite a bit of it last week against Oklahoma and were successful at it. Uh, so that will be the challenge for us this week. So how much does playing Kansas, for example, help you as far as dealing with the option? The um, – the way to stop those triple option teams are very similar. So we've, we've coached it earlier in the year, um, but we just got to make sure we get it coached this week and, and get up to par because you, you turn somebody loose and they're, they're going to hit a big one on you in option football. So we got to make sure we have a man for a man. Time for What's Your Beef. It's brought to you by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. You can see the quality through the clean, clear plastic packaging. So you, ta you talk a lot about the enhanced speed defensively. Guys are bigger, faster, stronger than they've ever been. What's the offense counter to that? If the players are faster and bigger on defense, on offense, what do you do to combat that? It's interesting that what I'm seeing in this league is offenses now that are using unbalanced formations and motions and somewhat trying to trick a defense – to get them on their heels to where they're not as aggressive. We're not doing as much of it. We're doing a little bit of it, but about half the teams in this league are doing a considerable amount of it. And I think it's for that reason. I think it's to try to offset defenses that are so good and big and strong and fast at this point. That's our show. The Cowboys taking on BYU this weekend, and we'll see you next week.